All right, so there's a couple tips to when you're programming servo controls inside of Studio 5000 or RS Logic 5000, they could greatly help you in speeding things up and actually programming them, right? Now, this would be like on off type scenarios, um, just different controls and different instructions that will help you easily tag different things. We're going to create a UDT inside of this, a user defined data type that you're going to actually make. And this is going to be specifically for motion, right? So servo controls. Now this could be for Studio 5000 or it could be for RS Logix 5000. All the way down to version, I believe 15 or 16, we're going to be using this environment in version 32 because that's just what we have here. Now um, also too, I want to keep in mind your, your tab up here, if you cannot like scroll back and forth, um, that's because you don't have anything open, like a routine open, and that's generally because the software is letting you know that. If I were to open a routine, you can see that I do have the ability to scroll up here now, right? So this is going to be making a UDT based upon all of our instructions that we need for motion, right? So servo controls and servo motion. Um, as you see, I already have some code in here, basically getting the temperature of a servo drive uh, or servo motor itself uh, that I showed in a prior video what we're going to do here is basically just come in here and, uh, and just to open the routine so we can actually utilize this top bar here and understand some of the controls so what are we going to be making the actual uh, if we scroll over here we can see we're going to be making the UDT or the user defined data type based upon all the instructions that we would have for our motion state our motion move um, the group we don't really really need and stuff like that, but this is going to be for the basic motion stuff You want to make a UDT to with all of these right? So first what we need to do to make this uh, more efficient Again, like, like I said if we wanted to actually utilize this if we want to come over here and turn the servo on We could come over here and we could easily come in here and tag this we can pick our servo Which our trainer servo and we could name this a specific name a tag name or whatever the case may be now, with that said though, every time I use that single, let's just say I, want, I only have one servo or I have 10 servos, they all have their independent name, right? In this atmosphere, my servo has the name uh, control or trainer servo. Um, with that said, if I have like 10 servos, you know, I wanna have a UDT so I can easily find that or I can easily, easily like tag that stuff and save myself some time, so I'm gonna Instead of making all the, the tags individually, I'm going to come over here and go to Assets. I'm going to go to UDT, our User Define, and I'm going to create a new data type. Now, I could have imported this, but basically I'm just going to make it. So you can, and again, all this does apply with the older versions. So again, this is Studio 5000, but it does apply to RS Logix 5000. So we're going to call this Basic. Um, and we're going motion UDT it's just something that we can understand you know uh, we can pick and, and use in our system right so what are some key things we want to find in here again we're going to go off of our um, you know our instructions or you could easily come over here to uh, right click your motion group and come over here to motion axis direct commands and see the exact same things that you can actually control you know your servo with right so just keep in mind you can get your you can get what you need to use inside of here right there's a a certain pattern that you you need to turn a servo on or double check some data before you turn it on to make sure it starts every single time a reliable and in, in, in a reliable fashion right so we're, what we're going to do first though if we're going to make our actual uh udt so we'll call this mso and our data type right here is going to be obviously a motion instruction so we'll just type in motion um, and then we'll come over here and motion instruction we can put a dimension in here of how many we want um, in some instances I just choose eight um, just to give me a little bit more functionality you may never use eight but there it doesn't hurt to have uh, you know an abundance of stuff just in case you need to grow or you never know when you need to add something so it's best, especially when you're making a UDT. So we'll come over here and next thing we'll do, so we did a, a motion axis on. Again, I'm getting these from up here. This is a motion axis off. We got a motion axis shutdown, uh, shutdown reset or shutdown. Re uh, we have a shutdown reset. We have a motion axis direct command. 
Uh, some of these things we, we are or not going to use. So what I'm going to do is right quick, I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to go ahead and make all these as you see the how to actually import the or how to actually add these one by one. And we're going to come back and see exactly what we have rather than you see me typing this stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and we'll pick right back up. All right, so we have everything added now. Now, this is, uh, again, coming back, we have our motion axis on, motion axis off, uh, shutdown, reset, uh, shutdown, shutdown resets, uh, fault resets, shutdown or a stop, a MAH, which is a home, a MAJ, which is a jog, a MAM, which is a move to position or move to a, you know, well, it's a move to position. And then you have your MAG, uh, which is a, uh, basically a gear and you have motion change dynamic right here and a motion uh, redefined position these are some common things that you have uh, again that's why I'm calling it basic um, this is not limited to or um, if nothing written in stone right but again that's when as soon as you have all these imp imported or, or actually added not imported but added you're gonna hit apply right and that's when we have our UDT so now we have a basic motion UDT. So so let's just say I want to come in here and add a an instruction right now, right? So let's just say I want to do a motion axis on um, or a motion axis off, uh, whatever the case may be. I can do these very easily. Watch. So I'll come over here, pick my my axis that I want to control, and then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to call this um, we'll call this axis uh, one right and then so we'll just say x1 we'll change our data type to now look at our actual basic motion so what we'll do is we'll just type in basic motion and as you can see it's in our user defined okay so we're going to do that and then we're going to come in here and get the instance of that so this is a motion axis off right so we're going to come in here and we'll get one of these and then all I have to do right here is come over here and pick from that. See, so now I have motion axis on, so I can just come over here and just pick from that. So it's just like that. I can just add all of my elements. I can continuously program all these. Now I'm just gonna add in a bunch of these, uh, just not to say that this is the natural order of operation or anything like that. I'm just showing you how easily you can utilize this UDT. Now we'll come back in a, a later video and, and show you, you know, how to do this or how to, the, what is the standard order of operation that you would do a servo or would you uh, reliably control a servo, right? So uh, when it comes up to it, this is the motion axis shutdown reset. So we'll go right here, we'll pick the very first one. Again, we have eight of these, so uh, we can choose however many we want. This is the shutdown. Uh, so we'll do a shutdown right here So you see how easily and quickly I can actually add and, and basically come in and program this stuff right just by merely adding a UDT Right, so I can have servo 1 servo 2 servo 3 servo 4 uh, as many as I want to but again in my scenario I only have one so it's you know as far as that goes I don't need it so I just wanted to delete that I'm gonna delete that wrong real quick again because well we don't need it right now and what we're gonna do is in another video we're gonna come back and show you the order of operation of how you should actually you know reliably turn on the servo uh, make sure do status checks and make sure things need to be if they're res if they're not reset reset them before you turn them on because you don't what what you don't want to do is create a problem or create an error on your servo controller so again that all rolls back to having their standard practice of having your UDT there already and if you've seen me up any of my videos you've seen these in the past where I come into motion access direct and I have actually come and use this as a test and I turn these on a certain way and I turn them off a certain way I actually run them a certain way right so that but there's a standard order of operation that I've learned in the past that it's just a best practice again nothing written in stone but it is a best practice has always been a reliable source for my you know myself and others that program servo controls so with that said um, hopefully this video you know basically showing you how to do a, a simple basic motion UDT a user defined data type helped you and how to program moving forward again you're using an instance of so hopefully this has helped you and again we'll see you guys on the next one